Hey there, it's a cold wintry morning and we're in Auckland, New Zealand and we're inside the Auckland Law School which is part of the University of Auckland. So all of you who have questions about how can I become a lawyer in New Zealand, what kind of work opportunities can I get, internships, whether my degree is going to be valid when I travel to other countries, can I get a scholarship, what are the costs involved and all those questions that you have, we're going to get those answered for you today and I'm going to take you right in to meet the experts. Okay, so we walked into the law school and we're in the biggest, largest law library that there is in New Zealand. And I'm talking with Chris Noonan, so let me introduce Chris to you. Chris is Associate Dean International of the Auckland Law School. So Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you. And thank you for the time. And thank you for letting us into this beautiful space of yours. A pleasure. So tell me, a lot of students out there watching the show are very interested about studying law in New Zealand and the various opportunities that they could have here. So talk us through the situation in New Zealand in terms of being a lawyer here. Well, to be a lawyer here, most students will do, enter as an undergraduate and they'll study for an LLB degree or an LLB honours degree. And typically they'll do it, most of our students will do it as a conjoint as well. So they'll do um, a Bachelor's of Arts and a Bachelor of Laws at the same time, or Commerce and Law, or Science and Law. Right. So typically that will take um, five years for five students years, to graduate yeah. with right. a conjoint degree. Okay. okay, that's exactly how it is in India. You do a BA LLB or a BSc LLB, so that's a five year degree. And then the postgraduate program? Yeah, we have a quite a large postgraduate program, the, the largest postgraduate program in New Zealand in law as well. We have sort of several different programs on offer here. We have sort of a, an LLM, which is the usual sort of postgraduate law qualification. Right. We also have a Master of Taxation Studies, which is a specialist degree for people who wish to sort of practice in the area of, of taxation advice. The students who sort of enter that degree may may be law graduates or they may be sort of commerce or commerce, sort of accounting okay. graduates okay. as well. Okay. So it's quite a mix and it's quite sort of quite dynamic because of that. We also have a third master's, a master's of legal studies right. which is open to people who've got different sorts of backgrounds as well. Um, so they don't necessarily have to have a law or commerce degree okay. but they may be interested in they may be interested in international relations and so they may sh to study aspects of international law for instance or human rights or, or something along that or or they've got an interest in engineering, it's their background in engineering, and they're interested in moving more into management, so they're interested in sort of intellectual property, right. sort of contracting issues, yes. corporate governance, and, and issues like yeah. that. Yes, yeah. yes, that's fantastic. So I look at it as three different programs. A student who's done an undergraduate in law would look at all three, but then the LLM is primarily for them. You've got the taxation program, which could be part and part, you know, commerce students, which is very interesting for people doing commerce. You want to be, you know, understanding the law aspects of it. And for a non-commerce student, you could look at the legal masters and legal studies program. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that's a fabulous, beautiful mix of programs that you have. But this also makes the classroom more dynamic yes. as well. If you have people from different backgrounds, they bring the different sort of uh, the knowledge they have, the skills they have, perspectives yes. on the world. Yes. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. And these are typically one-year programs. Um, Typically one year, uh, depending on sort of the qualification people come in with as well. So the LLM is always a one year degree, right. as, is, as is internationally standard as right, well. Right. Uh, the MTAX-S is typically a one year degree. Uh, the MLS can be a one year or one and a half year degree, depending on the background people come in with as well. Right. And then you've got this PhD program. Yeah, and so the PhD is like sort of a PhD in most places. <laughs> so it's generally sort of the result of sort of um, three years of study and you write a, a thesis, um, effectively a book. Right. And uh, right. yeah, we have a number of PhD students in our faculty. Okay, great. So now coming back to the master's program, roughly what percentage of your master's students are international students? Ah, uh, it's, it's, it depends how you calculate it. <laughs> uh, Probably I'd say about half and half. Okay. It's, it fluctuates every, all the time as well. A lot of our domestic students will be doing it part time. They'll be working downtown and they may do sort of the, the masters in the evening as well. Whereas the international students tend to be studying full time. Full -time. Okay. Possibly working part time. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's interesting. 50% international students in your master's programs. 
and uh, they get internships while they work that entire one year program can they work generally the master's program is sort of is reasonably intensive so there isn't sort of so much time for for an internship people are eligible to work to work part time so chris let's talk about the master's program because with 50% international i'm guessing that's where a lot of my viewers would want to sort of make an entry into auckland yeah i mean Students, uh, international students come here for a number of different reasons as well. Some of them are coming with a view of sort of gaining knowledge and experience and going back home. Others looking at this as a stepping stone to go into an international firm or multinational. Others are looking to move to New Zealand permanently as right, well. Right. And so that's sort of facilitated by sort of New Zealand immigration rules at the moment. Fantastic. So looking at jobs and immigration, like you said, how easy is that? Well, at the moment, the New Zealand economy is doing quite well and so unemployment is, is quite low. So a lot of our students sort of who come here looking for jobs after they graduate are quite successful as well. We've had a number of students from India who have sort of found their way into the legal profession here Fantastic. over the last couple of years. And what are the sorts of areas do you find them moving into? It depends a lot on the interest of the individual as well. Some will be focusing on sort of smaller firms based on what they've the experiences. Others are looking for multinationals. Right. Everything. Everything's different. It depends on the individual. It depends on the individual. There are government jobs as well. Is that something that a few international students have been able to get into? Not all jobs are open to sort of international students right. in the government right. as well, for, for obvious reasons, like most countries. But um, I think last year, the year before last, a student of ours uh, from India sort of uh, had an internship with the Privacy Commissioner and uh, they were offered a job with uh, the Privacy Commission after that as well. So yes, a lot of, some of our students do find their way into sort of the, the public right. sector here. Right. And from their residency sort of is a, is a stepping stone towards residency. Yeah, um, if someone's got a degree here, they've graduated from New Zealand and they find a job, residency sort of is very easy after that as well. Okay, lovely. Well, that sounds very exciting for, for my viewers, but one of the questions they want to probably ask is the cost and then are there any scholarships available? <laughs> okay, so the international students that we have, most of them are, will be postgraduate students rather than sort of undergraduate students. And the cost of a one year sort of postgraduate program with us is uh, 33,000 New Zealand dollars, which right. is about 24,000 US dollars okay. as well. Okay. So uh, relative to, it's cheap relative to a comparable Australian sort of law school right. as well, we're cheaper. So coming to my favorite question on scholarships. <laughs> there are some scholarships and, and the law school itself offers a scholarship for LLM students right. um, and that's worth 25,000 New Zealand dollars okay. uh, for the year. In addition to that the university as a whole offers scholarships for students who are doing a research masters. So rather than doing a masters that involves a number of sort of individual courses you may write a whole thesis. And if you're doing that, and, and, or most of your sort of uh, master's is a thesis, then uh, the university will provide a scholarship if you've got a high GPA when you're coming into it, a high sort of a grade point average when you're coming into the degree. Okay, so when you say high GPA, is there a number that you look at? We, in our system, we would regard it as a GPA of eight. Eight. And would you know what that would translate to for an Indian system? It's, it's off the top of my head, I'm not entirely sure, but I'd say it was a, be around, a mark of around 80%. Okay. And it's based over the last year. Right. Okay, so this is from a recognized university. Yes. An undergraduate program, which could be either in law or not in law, depending on what masters they're getting into. Yes. And they have roughly 80%, but they need to work that out. And once they have it, they are eligible for the scholarship. Yeah, and the scholarship will provide for free tuition fees and a stipend of about thirteen thousand dollars, New Zealand dollars a year as well. So for the the law masters, it, typically the the period of time for the year is, is not a full twelve months. The start of the year is the start of March typically, and running until sort of November. So it's for about an eight or a nine month period of time that students, international students, would be living here. Fantastic. And there's no limit to how many students you'll give this to? No. Is it open to anyone that makes that mark? Anyone who makes that. Well, that's so it's, desi it's designed to attract sort of the very best students. Yeah, yeah. and you're constantly looking for more uh, top-of-the-line students. <laughs>
So, Chris, this wonderful scholarship that you mentioned, uh, is there a name to it? Yes, it's the University of Auckland Research Master's Scholarship. Okay, fantastic. And they can find that on the website? Yes, it's, there's a clear link there for it on the website okay. as well. So looking at the master's program, this is probably the best scholarship or are there a few others? It's the best scholarship for the master's program. But there's also there's scholarships for doctoral students as well right, that we have right. as well. And probably even more sort of generous scholarships for doctoral students. Okay. A lot of students here will come, they may have done a master's and, and decided that they, they wish to research more deeply into a particular question and they will sort of apply for a scholarship or stay on for that. But we've got students who may have done a master's elsewhere mm -hmm. who will come here and, um, and study for a PhD with us as well. Okay, so what are the kind of scholarships you have there? What are the costs there? In addition to the sort of the Commonwealth and Fulbright scholarships, the University of Auckland has its own sort of doctoral scholarship. And that sort of um, covers um, the university fees that you have to pay, uh, and as well as a, has a $27,000 a year stipend as well. Wow. For, for at least three years, mm -hmm. and, and typically can be extended for another six months mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, can they bring the family along? Yes, um, with um, students who are studying for a doctorate here, both their spouse is entitled to live, come to New Zealand and the spouse is entitled to work as well. Oh, that's, that's good. In addition to that, sort of the children of the, of the doctoral student are entitled to free education at, at, at a New Zealand sort of um, primary school or secondary school. Fabulous. So, and the fee in general, if they don't make the scholarship, the fee of... Yeah, for, our, for international doctoral students, they pay the same sort of fee as domestic students do okay. as well. Which is a little over six thousand dollars a year. Okay. Uh, do they? Is there a standard program that they apply to, or do they have to first locate a guide and then apply for the program? Well, the information about sort of the doctoral programs on our website. It, it's very simple and very okay. easy to, okay. to apply for okay. as well. Um, the students, or well, the potential students, have to think a little bit about the the topic they wish to write on as right. well. And so we ask them a little bit about the area they wish to work on in their PhD. And any master's program that they've taken up. Uh, elsewhere, like in India, would be recognized by you? Obviously, sort of for PhD students, we're looking for students who are particularly well qualified and who've got the, the academic ability to actually sort of engage in sort of detailed research as well. So, Chris, it's fantastic for the viewers because we are talking right now about the top ranked uh, law school in the whole of New Zealand. Yeah, we're, we're the largest and the, the highest ranked sort of law school in New Zealand. We sort of, internationally, we've got a very strong ranking as well. We're sort of ranked 36th in the QS rankings, and the university as a whole is in the sort of top 100 universities within the world as well. So, it's sort of, we have sort of a strong university, strong law faculty, and it's a very diverse as well student population. And being in the heart of Auckland, right in city centre, I'm sure networking opportunities and job opportunities for students open up that much more. Yeah, there's, there's sort of a close connection. So Auckland's the biggest city in New Zealand, and so there's the most legal practice occurs within New Zealand, with, in Auckland as well, and the commercial practice in particular as well. So yeah, there's a nice connection between sort of the, the bar and, um, and the university, and yeah. the law faculty. And looking at transferability of the skill into other countries, so your alumni, typically, where do you find them? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're sort of, um, a very large percentage of our students will go overseas and work overseas. I think the figures are approximately about 30% of our students, uh, our alumni, work overseas. And, and probably the biggest destinations are New York and London. Fantastic. So thank you so much, Chris, for sharing that with us. I think it was priceless and I'm sure for students watching the show, they're all quickly going to open the website and see how can they get in here. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we've got Suranjika with us, who's a student center manager, and she's going to tell you all about how to apply, what is, what is it to live in Auckland, and many more questions. So Suranjika, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And tell us, that's another question they want to know is, they've heard Chris, and they're very keen now to apply to the University of Auckland Law School. So tell us if they apply for a postgraduate program, how should they go about it? So the first thing they do, uh, do is to apply online through a website. If you go on or click onto the website, on the right hand side there is a big button which says apply now. Okay. And when they click on it, the, there is a tutorial as to how to make the application. The application is entirely done online, okay. all the qualifications, the certificates and any research proposals that they intend to submit can be submitted online. Okay. 
The processing time of an application takes up to two weeks usually and we will be in touch with students individually. Okay. I'm Caroline Foster and I'm the Director of Doctoral Studies here at the Faculty of Law. So when your PhD application comes in, I'll be the person taking a look at it once it reaches the faculty and seeing if we can put together a supervision team for you. So in terms of timelines, uh, what's a good time for them to apply? We encourage international students to apply by, by 4th of December okay. for the following year okay. or for the second semester if they are coming in July, we ask them to apply by 4th of July. We have two semesters or okay. the universities in New Zealand have two semesters okay. each and they start in March and in July. Okay, okay. And apart from their research, do they need to have any other qualifications like English language proficiency? Yes, uh, usually we do look at the English language proficiency, but if a student has had their tertiary education in entirely in English, they can write to us and request the English language requirement to be waived. Okay, and otherwise it's just an application, there's no entrance exam or interview? No, there is no interview or an examination. The ap application is assessed entirely on their academic qualifications which they have completed. Okay, and typically they should be from a recognized university? They should be rec uh, typically from a recognized university. Okay, looking at the po uh, PhD program, uh, how should they go about that application process? So the PhD program applications are also done entirely um, through the web portal, the application um, process and what they should do is an applicant is interested, they should email us first to postgraduatelaw at auckland.ac.nz and we can send out the details and the instructions on how to submit the application. Okay, so they should ideally write to you? They should uh, write to us, because please. Because each one's yes. case tends Case is entirely different okay. and we can focus on their area of interest okay. and guide the, them through the application. Okay. Now talking about my favorite question, like I yes. always say, scholarships. Chris gave us an insight into a few uh, yes. very interesting scholarships. So I think Chris spoke to you about or gave details of the Auckland University scholarships, yes. but students who are applying to us also should look at the Commonwealth Scholarship, the Fulbright Scholarship and the Columbo Plan Scholarships. Okay. There are lots of scholarships available for students. They don't seem to actually explore these options right. and secondly when they do apply for scholarships they should put New Zealand or Auckland University as one option. Okay so the Commonwealth scholarship when they apply they should put University East of Auckland, of Auckland yes. right up front. Yes. You mentioned the Colombo plan and could you take us through a little bit about what so that? The countries that are involved in the Colombo plan program has several scholarships particularly for law, for business, but uh, for master of taxation that area of interest and they should uh, explore the scholarship opportunities within the regional offices. And the details again are all the, on all, your website. Yes. Okay, so you're saying to them that there are a lot of scholarships, scholarships available, available yes. and they're not going ahead and asking, asking for them. Yes. Okay, so guys, please apply and you know how to do it now. So Suranjika, tell yes. us about Auckland. It's such a vibrant city. I've been here for a few days and I completely love it. So tell us about students living here. It's a very um, lovely city to live in. It's one of the best livable cities in the world. It's a very safe environment for students. There is a diverse community and right. uh, there are lots of um, people from the subcontinent from the Indian subcontinent living here. It's a very safe environment Absolutely. for students to As live. I walk around, I see so many different people from so many ethnic backgrounds and so many international faces and, and safety is, is definitely underrated, but at this point of time, it's a big plus. Yes, <laughs> it would be for most international students who are coming because it might be their first time away from home and uh, Auckland is a lovely city to live in in that aspect. Yeah. Talking about living costs, mm -hmm. uh, how do you think students can manage that a little bit because big cities every, anywhere tend to be. Uh, yes, I'm not quite sure uh, whether Auckland living costs are as expensive as other big cities like in London or New York or Washington. It is quite expensive in comparison to the c uh, cities that we come from. It is a case of adjusting to a new lifestyle, a new set of requirements, I think. 
So thank you so much, Suranjika. I think you were so helpful, and my students out there might want to be in touch with you. And we'll give them an email address in case they have any questions. Yes, you're most welcome to ask them to get in touch with us. And our email address is postgradlaw at auckland.ac.nz. Thank you so much for being with you're us. You're welcome. And if you've enjoyed the show and you want to know more about this and you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section below the video. We'll have Suranjika answer them for you or I'll try to answer them for you and give you as much information as possible. And if you're looking to come to Auckland, this perhaps is a video you want to share with your family as well. And press that little red button to subscribe to the show and happy watching.